morning and welcome to Legacy After the Locker Room. I'm your host, Kayla Bradham, here tonight with a very special guest, the first woman to coach professional baseball, Justine Siegel. Good evening, Justine. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Justine, I want to say, first of all, I'm so excited to have you here tonight. I, I, you just got home last week from filming a TV show. You're doing so much work in the community. I'm, I'm blessed that you carved out time to be here, and I want to get right into this because time is going to be short. Tell us the story of you as a little girl. What sports did you enjoy playing? I, I almost have to assume it's softball. Um, tell us about your story, Justine. Yeah, I've played pretty much every sport I could. Uh, I grew up on my bicycle, I would say. And I actually played baseball and soccer were my two major sports. Okay. And how did you sort of whittle away soccer and and drive towards baseball? Um, I actually went and played soccer in college. So uh, I probably played that in some ways the longest, but um, I really wanted to play baseball in college. So I went to a D3 school where I could play college soccer and baseball. Um, unfortunately, uh, the school decided they ran out of uniforms. And oh, so when it came oh, to that's baseball, unfortunate. I only got to play fall ball. And then uh, even though they had a no cut policy, they decided, uh, sorry, we don't have any more uniforms. And so you can't play. And back then there was just no one to turn to and say, well, what do I do now? Oh my gosh. So you just hung it up? No, no. Then I went and played in men's leagues and so on. <laughs> oh yes, you did. <laughs> I, I did. I played maybe three years ago. I played in a league. So it, it's not quite hanging it up, but uh, that was uh, one dream unfulfilled, I have to say. So Justine, I, I saw on your website at 13 being told girls can't play softball. Will you share that story with our audience? Yeah, I mean, I was just basically um, one of the kids in the league. I was the only girl, but I didn't really think about that too much um, because I I was hanging with everybody else. Uh, But I got a new coach at 13 and he said that I should go play softball and that he didn't want me on his baseball team. Um, so I decided I would play forever and he couldn't kick me off. And so here I am, (laughs) but it was definitely like a motivator and, and he wasn't, you know, he may have been the first, but he certainly wasn't the last. And it was definitely the signal of the uphill battle to keep playing. And I, I just have to ask, obviously you were supported. It seems to me by your parents, is that a, a fair statement for me to say? Uh, could you make it again, please? Sure. Your parents supported you playing baseball. They weren't, your parents weren't trying to say Justine play softball. Sure. Um, so my father raised me and he never asked me to play softball. Probably one of the biggest gifts he gave me was just like complete support. And um, when I was in high school, I started taking baseball lessons and um, going to baseball camp, things like that. Or I'd always gone to soccer camp. Like I loved soccer and I I really wanted to be a pro soccer player. But um, eventually the more people started to take, try to take baseball away from me, the more I loved the game and the more committed I was to playing. Oh my goodness. And so Justine, I have to ask, I'm a parent. I have eight children. You're a mom. You have, how old is your daughter? 22? Yeah, my daughter's 23 now. So she's the same age I was when I had her as well as the same age when I started what is now Baseball for All. So it's sort of like this insane universe where <laughs> we're up in different ways. And, and a lot of the same things, unfortunately, are still happening. And so I have to ask your advice to parents of kids who, whether it be trans athletes, LGBTQ, or just an athlete who says, you know what, I don't want to play in this league. I want to play in another league. What's your advice to parents? I mean, my advice for everyone is to follow your passions. Um, And if you're not allowed to play in one league, go find a league that you can or create a league. I mean, just find a way to get through the wall. If you have to 
dig under or if you have to jump over or go around or just blow up the wall, um, go ahead and do it. It's hard. It's hard, but um, I believe good things happen when you follow your passion. I do too. I couldn't agree with you more, Justine. So let's take a quick moment to remind our listeners, this is the Legacy After the Locker Room podcast. We are powered by Sports Philanthropy Network, and we're here tonight with Justine Siegel. Justine was the first woman to coach professional baseball. Justine, tell us a little bit about that story. So not only were you good enough to play, you were skilled, and I mean highly skilled. How did you push through the wall and get into coaching at the pro level? Yeah, I may have had to make a new wall. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I, my goal when I was about 15 or 16, I decided I want to be a college baseball coach. And um, my coach at the camp that I like, you know, worshipped, I, I thought he was the greatest thing ever. He laughed at me and told me a man would never listen to a woman on a baseball field. So um, originally I was very embarrassed. I was a very shy kid, but then I decided to like, who's he to decide what I can do? And so at that age, I decided I'd be a college baseball coach. And later on, I I went after that dream. Um, I think I was actually 30 and I went and coached college baseball. And it was very difficult. At first I was rejected, but then I got a job at the college across town. And then when they found out, they wanted me to come back and coach for them. And so I did. Um, And then I I was just so well received. That that was at Springfield College in Massachusetts. It was just a wonderful program. And from there, um, I had the opportunity to meet Mike Beck, who owned some minor league teams. And I asked the Brockton Rocks if I could coach for them. And after three interviews, they finally said yes. And so in 2009, I became the first woman. And that was... um, you know, really a start of my journey. I, I didn't consider it the end, but um, it was it was sort of a big deal. I, it shouldn't have been. It really shouldn't have been a big deal. I should have just been another coach coaching, but it was because a, a woman had never done it before. Yeah, and I agree with you. There's, you know, we have women who've gone to the moon years and years ago, but coaching baseball, yeah, that's just a little too much. So I, I completely agree you've coached minor league baseball, but you've done a whole bunch of other things at a professional level, including getting your PhD. Let's talk about sports, but I don't want to leave education out of this because I do think it's critical. Continue on with your journey. So after you teach minor league baseball, then. Yeah. So it was an independent league. Um, my, my goal when I was a teenager was to get a PhD. And my reasoning was that I wouldn't have the same playing opportunities as other men who were college coaches, but I could out educate them. So I would use education as my tool. And so, um, you know, I wasn't sure how I would get a PhD because I wasn't like the best student, but I was someone who worked hard. So I did get that PhD in sports psychology. Um, In 2011, I convinced Billy Bean to allow me to throw batting practice to him. And so I became the first woman at the major league batting practice. And I threw to six teams, which was a total dream. It was a lot of pressure, but it was a total dream. And my daughter was with me. I think she was 13 when that happened. And so we were just traveling around team to team uh, during spring training, you know, just having like a really good time and throwing BP and trying not to hit anyone. Um, Then I went to scout school and uh, the Indians sent me to, sorry, uh, the Guardians now. Yes. Sent me uh, to scout school. And so that was, that was a lot of fun. And so from there, I I got the idea that, hey, if I, it, I heard that international coaches are sometimes invited to instructional league within major league baseball. And I thought, well, if there's a loophole for them, there's a loophole for me. So I started asking Billy Bean every year if I could uh, coach with the A's. And so after four years, he, you know, the A's finally said yes. And so I coached during Instructional League um, in 2015. And so that jersey is now in Cooperstown. That's fabulous. And not only that, working on a TV show, you just wrapped that up. Tell us a little bit about that. Can you talk about it even? I can tell you that last week I was in Pittsburgh 
And uh, I was the baseball coordinator for A League of Their Own, the TV show coming out. Uh, my responsibilities were training actors, um, somewhat managing the background, right? The, the Peaches have to play the Blue Sox, which are uh, background players. Um, and just, you know, helping the writing, make sure it's, it's authentic or coming up with a play that maybe the writer might have gotten stumped on. I mean, it's just a total, like, I can't believe I'm here job. And I'm so honored to contribute to the League of Their Own um, legacy. It's going to be a great show. Justine, are we going to see you in a cameo or anything in the movie? You are. <laughs> yes. You are going to see me uh, on this TV show, but probably not where you think. Okay. Cliffhanger. <laughs> so you All have right. to look carefully. Okay, and can we just, you know, do a, a quick promotion of that? Do we, do you know when that is going to begin airing and on what? Yeah, network? yeah I'm not sure when it'll air, uh, but it is an Amazon Sony uh, release, so you'll see it on Amazon. And, um, you know, it's a real look at 1943 as a, as, as a woman baseball player, what it was like um, in 1943 from... The All-Americans, you know, this kind of white feminine ideal that they tried to play out. And then um, what, what was it like to live that as well as what was it like for the women who were excluded uh, because they weren't the white All-American wow. person that the league wanted. So you follow um, two different characters and one and one is going to tell you all about what it's like in, in the black community trying to play baseball and the other in the uh, the peaches um, wholesome community and it's going to be pretty amazing. It's a great commentary about 1943. This is something I can't wait to watch. I, I'm I'm really going to get all of my kids together, make popcorn, have snacks. We're going to have a picnic in the living room and watch that. I'm so excited. Thank you for creating things that create hope and possibility. Much appreciated. So Justine, speaking of hope and possibility, I wanna go back to that PhD just a little bit because it reminds me so much of Dr. Jen Walter doing the same thing in football, right? And it's really trying to, as you said, outsmart the men and coming up with your own tactics, building new walls, breaking down old ones, building up new ones. Can you just share with us, in my spare time, I give back to the community by teaching in Milwaukee. I think education is critical. It's, it's going to be a key to success. Tell us a little bit about what that educational journey looked like for you, because you weren't getting your PhD at 23. <laughs> no, I was getting my PhD with my daughter. Um, so we were in Massachusetts, and I would take her to my 7 a.m class in sports psychology and then we would i would drop her off at, at school you know and then after class there were times where it would be 7 p.m sports philosophy and she would she would have to go to that as well so it was definitely different as a single mother going through your phd um but my ph like my education did exactly what i wanted one it helps me break down barriers. So a lot of the media talked about how I was going through and getting my PhD, you know, it was like a qualifier. And second, it Wait, made I'm me sorry, a better just, coach. Just in case baseball wasn't enough of a qualifier, the education was, right? Not, not your skills alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was able to use all of this sports psychology knowledge and communication and motivation and, and understanding players' learning styles and putting that together and making myself um, a very effective coach because coaching is very much communication. And if you can't communicate and if you can't understand the other person's needs, then then how can you meet them? You know, so we don't want to just talk at athletes. We want to, we want to understand them. We want to be working together towards something. And so that's really what I was able to take away from my sports psychology. I did less, you know, concentration skills or or drills, as you might say, mental skills, as um, incorporating all the information and having it become who I am as a coach and, and, and really as a leader. Yeah, and Justine, you said something that really spoke to my heart, and that was being a single mom, taking your daughter with you to classes. I'm a single mom, I have eight kids. 
I feel like I can relate to what you're saying and I know how hard it is to try to get kids to sports practices and to hang out with their friends and to get the school things that they need. So let's just speak to the single parents out there and whether it's access to sports or facilities or finances for equipment, there are a lot of challenges, right? And I know you're working hard um, with your foundation, um, the Baseball for All, but would you mind just speaking to parents a little bit about creating some hope and some possibility and tell us what you're doing with Baseball for All? Sure, that's a huge question. <laughs> um, I, I had my daughter in college, so I've had her my entire adult life. And I just got lucky that she had the temperament to sit still or entertain herself or go talk to adults until things were over. Um, and I had just a lot of people who were kind to help me, you know, entertain her or a professor letting her come and sit in the class. Um, she used to even ask questions, you know, like, well, what about this? Have you thought about that? Um, so what we do with sports is, you know, wasn't always about sports. It was about movement. So if we were standing in line, like, could we stand on one foot? Could we walk backwards? How quickly could you run to that tree and back while we're, you know, still waiting in line? We were always just trying to do motor development, which is getting the body moving so that you would, you know, the earlier you get your motor development and teach your body to jump and throw and catch, it's a lot easier to then do these skills later on in life. Um, so I did start Baseball for All, um, which she inspired because I was tired of girls being told that they shouldn't play baseball and I wanted to create opportunities. And so essentially what we do is we help community circles, baseball programs, and then create events for those girls to play. And right now, many of our girls already play with the boys and they're the only ones. So it's very magical when they come together and meet other girls. Um, and to us, it's super important that girls believe in themselves. You know, can you imagine like, you know, and this actually happened in history, you know, right now girls are being told they shouldn't play baseball. Um, I'm sorry, girls shouldn't play, go to math class. Girls shouldn't go to science. And that's only like 30 years ago when, you know, women weren't allowed to go to certain majors. They were discouraged from different jobs. So right now in 2021, we're in the, oh, girls play baseball still, which is insane. So Baseball for All is countering that and creating a new narrative that girls play baseball and frankly, they can do whatever they want and they should go follow their passions and what they love to do. Thank you so much for what you're doing uh, with Baseball for All. And there's a caveat to that. So anybody who follows Justine, you can follow Justine on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Justine Siegel. Justine, if anybody takes a peek at your Instagram account and Baseball for All, it's not just female athlete. You're creating and holding space for trans athletes as well there, correct? I mean, I'm creating a safe space, I hope, for everyone. We are certainly um, LGBTQ friendly. Um, I'd say we have a large percentage of our older players uh, belong to the beautiful queer family. Um, so we want, we want everyone to know that Baseball for All is inclusive. I want everyone to know that I am an advocate. And, um, you know, that's just who we are. T to me, it's not even a question. It's just, it's just the right thing. Like, how could you not be inviting and inclusive to every child who wants to play? Man, I, I love that. And um, I, I think if I could capture one sentence from this podcast, Justine, it would be that sentence. Because I think it really is about creating hope and possibility for every student as a human being to live their life and to have movement and find the things that only sports can teach us. So that was a beautiful, beautiful sentence. And I promise to quote that everywhere I can for you. Just, Justine, we, um, you know, we're more than two thirds of the way through this podcast. And I want to take a second, first of all, just to thank the legacy after the locker room community for their support, to thank you for your support and for making time to come on and, and just share what you're doing with us. 
I want to give you a moment, Justine, to just really speak some wisdom from your experience. The things that you've learned walking the path that you've walked are so different than anybody else, right? Like nobody has done the things that you have done. In your experience, what has been the biggest reward? Um, I didn't necessarily hear all of that because um, you broke up a little bit. But what I would say is that I was a really shy kid and I'm actually still pretty socially awkward. Um, sometimes people have taken that as in um, I'm full of myself like because I'm not so uh, bubbly, but I'm actually just a really quiet person. So I always kind of like preface, look, don't judge. This is just who I am. I'm awkward. Um, so I think I would tell a kid um, that no one knows what they're doing. You know, we, we, all, we all think someone else knows what they're doing. And even as an adults, we think that other people know what they're doing and look at them and, 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 and really we're all just doing the best we can. Um, and I think that's really important because when I was young, it shyness was, you know, I wasn't sure about myself. Now as an adult, I know who I am. I just prefer quiet. <laughs> I'm just not that, that outgoing. I'm an introvert, but but I always give people my heart. So I truly believe that if you, if you are who you wanna be, then, then you'll surround yourself with the people that deserve to be around you. And um, I think at, a, at an existential level, we need to sort of grasp that, that who we are, and, and that's how we then go forward into the world. Um, so, so that's probably bigger than you wanted, but that would be my, my advice. And, I, and just you know, to, Oh, not, I was just going to say, I mean, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I think for me, it's just living a life of gratitude. There's, it's so easy to see what you don't have. And sometimes that catches you, you know, and you dwell on it, but then it, you know, it's your responsibility to take a deep breath and just say, this is amazing. This is amazing. Look, look at everything I have. I have this bed to sleep in. I, I mean, there's times at night I just lay in bed and just, do a list of thank yous. And it's not, it's not for having my jersey in Cooperstown. It's because my daughter's safe or I, or I got to have lunch with her or my relationship's going well, you know, those types of things. So I think gratitude and in, in just being who you are um, is, is where it's at. Big words. I, I feel like you just took me to church, Justine. Um, I wish we all counted our blessings just a little bit more and stopped complaining just a little bit more as well. Justine, I do want to ask you, I, speaking of gratitude, I ask every guest on Legacy After the Locker Room to partner with me and my charity of choice, Special Olympics. Can we count on you for an autograph donation, Justine? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll definitely do it in donation in... Um in my friend Colin Blackwell's name. He was, uh, we grew up together. We played soccer together every day after school. The neighborhood went out, played every sport you can think. And, and Colin went out and, and became, I don't know how many medals he won in the Special Olympics. So um, I am happy to give that donation. Colin, that athletes. donation is for you. Thank you so much. And folks, if you want to follow Justine, I just want to put this up here for anybody watching the live stream. And if you're just listening to the podcast, Justine Siegel, S-I-E-J-G-A-L, on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Justine, if people want to connect with you on a professional level, are you doing professional speaking, motivational speaking, anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I do corporate speaking and group youth group speakings as well in school stuff. Uh, you can reach out to me. My email is justinebasewell at gmail.com. It's pretty easy to remember, Justine Baseball. And, um, you know, I, I'm here to serve. I'm here to be a part of this bigger picture that that girls and, and boys should be able to grow up and, and be who they are and, and become leaders and, and believe in themselves. And that's what Baseball for All is doing in, in one part of the pie. But, you know, we need everyone to fill the pie and everyone needs to do their work. And so I'm grateful to Sports Plan for, you know, what they're doing and you and your podcast. 
Thanks, Justine. All right, I wanna give you a minute or two to share your favorite experience. Of <laughs> what, my entire life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I mean, it, it can be sports related. It doesn't have to be, but you've had big moments. I mean, you've been recognized by ESPNW. You have a Jersey in Cooperstown. You're filming a movie. You have experiences that people dream about. So yeah, I want to hear them. I mean, one of my favorite experiences was with Joe Madden when I threw batting practice to the um, the Rays back in 2011. And my daughter was there and um, Joe Madden, we were in the equipment room, which is like Christmas, right? Or Hanukkah. And there's just like every t-shirt, every wristband, everything you can think of is in there for the team gear. And so Joe Madden was trying to get Jasmine, my daughter to say that the Rays were her favorite team. But secretly the Giants were her favorite team because of Tim come, even though it should be Cleveland because we're from Cleveland. So Joe Madden keeps giving her things, a wristband, a shirt, a hat, and she just won't say anything. And so finally it's over and Joe Madden just goes to me, she goes, he goes, great, she can't be bought. And it was just like this really magical experience between the three of us. And, and then when we walked away from the locker room, the equipment room, Jasmine said, the Rays are my second favorite team. <laughs> And so it was just a really cool, like, just mother-daughter baseball moment um, in which I can't believe that we got to experience. That's fabulous. Oh, my gosh. And to have a kid who can't be bought means you won as a mom, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> she's, good she's job. A good kid. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> good job. Okay, and then, Justine, I want to just touch back on a few things because I think they're really important. Um, just as we're closing this out, the movie. People can, it's, it's coming out soon. We don't have the release date, but Sony, Amazon, a league of their own. That's going to be a great story. Absolutely. Can, people can contact you or connect or follow you, Justine Siegel on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And I wanna put this um, email address up one more time. It's justinebaseball at gmail.com. And Justine, one of the things that I think is so cool about you really is how down to earth you are. Um, you're not conceited. You're very willing to reach out and connect. And I think it's just so great that you give out your personal email address on a podcast and say, yeah, if somebody wants to reach out to me, they can. I've gotten comments all day long about how you are so many people's hero. And I got to ask you, Justine, how's that pressure? What does it feel like when, when you hear you're somebody's hero? Uh, it's very kind of them. You know, uh, I'm just doing my best to make social change in this world to help people. You know, for me, there's so many ways people help. And for me, uh, I get to do it through baseball. And it hasn't been an easy journey. It's been a very difficult one. But if I can make it that journey easier for those behind me, then, then that's what it's all about. And now you have, for example, just women coaching in the major leagues and minor leagues right now. I mean, that's amazing. They're not even alone. It's not like the one. There's, <laughs> there's a bunch of them, you know, and now we have girls who have a community all across the country knowing that they are not alone anymore. They're, they're not the girl. They're, they're part of the baseball for all community. They're a baseball player. And that's really, that's where it is. You know, it's, we're in it together. And it's the only way that we can rise to rise up together. Both boys and girls deserve everything we can give to them. They sure do. Justine, we're just about out of time. I want to give you just a few minutes to thank the people in your life that you need to thank and shout out and give us your parting word of wisdom. <laughs> well, I would like to thank all the volunteers that help Baseball for All Run. I mean, I obviously have an incredible family, um, but Baseball for All runs because of our volunteers and for the parents and everyone who goes out in their community and starts a program so a kid can get to play. Um, and my words of wisdom are, don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. Go after it and live your dream. I have nothing to add. 
That is it. Folks, my name is Kayla Bradham, host of Legacy After the Locker Room, here tonight with the first woman to coach professional baseball, Justine Siegel. And we're here to remind you to live your legacy. Thanks, Justine. Thank you.